The main reason we're here today is to talk about graphics, right? And talk about technology in general. So in previous years, I'd say about, about the last nine years or so, we've run a special talk, short talk at the very beginning about Martin Gardner. Who's Martin Gardner? Uh, he, was, he was a relatively famous, not mathematician, but a journalist who specialized in mathematical things. He did a monthly mathematical games column for Scientific American magazine. And 1956 to 1981, that's a long time. And a lot of us learned some very fun and interesting mathematics through this, some of which is actually related to computer graphics, by the way. Uh, Gardner wrote uh, a bunch of books also, the Compendiums of Mathematical Games Articles, Word Puzzles. He wrote a wonderful book on the annotated Alice in Wonderland, Alice Through the Looking Glass. I think that's his number one seller. It's, it's really good, right? And there's a lot of weird mathematics. And he's written books on pseudoscience and, and uh, with something he calls the skeptical inquirer, you know, looking at, you know, claims of the paranormal and saying, uh, you know, maybe this isn't so, you know. Okay. But today's presentation, and this is very short, we, we you know, we want to get you back to, to the graphics, is actually on something that Gardner wrote a column about in 1970, and it's called The Game of Life. And the reason we want to talk about The Game of Life is because it was actually created by somebody who has a Princeton connection. And that's John Horton Conway. Uh, Conway was a lecturer at Cambridge. He was he's, he's, he's English and you know graduated from from university in in uh, in Britain and was a lecturer in Cambridge sixty four to eighty six. But then he came to Princeton and he was a mathematics professor here at Princeton for quite a while. Right. Unfortunately, he passed away in April two thousand twenty. And yes, he did die of COVID. Um, he was in a little fragile health anyway, but uh, we we miss him, you know. Yeah. He's spoken for our chapter a couple of times and talked about Martin Gardner, right? But I but I wanted to talk about the game of life because I actually had an early encounter with the game of life in 1974 as a as an undergraduate and had to actually program a simulator, right? How does it work? Well, you have a two dimensional grid and you choose a starting pattern of live cells. You know, this is not like any computer game that you know. There's no shooting. There's no characters. There's no levels. There's no computer gaming culture at all. But there are a set of rules that explain how this pattern evolves over time. And here are the rules. There are three, right? Uh, creating new live cells in empty spaces is called the birth rule. Any cell where you know you got eight neighbors around the cell in a in a two dimensional grid. If exactly uh, three of them are occupied by a live cell, then the next gen next cycle, the next step, you're going to get a new live cell created there. Live cells that exist will continue to exist so long as they're not starved or crowded, right? So two or three neighboring cells, it's okay. Zero or one. It dies of isolation, um, or more, it dies of overcrowding. So let's do a simple pattern. It's this straight little vertical line of three cells. And what you'll notice is, right, the, um, the ones next to the middle cell, they have three neighbors, you know, one dia you know, up and down di diagonally and one straight across. That, so you're going to get a birth there on to the, to the left and to the right of that line. But the ones on the ends are going to die because they only have one neighbor. The one in the middle is okay because it's got two. So that's the second step. You know, you're going to have the three across instead of the three vertical. What's going to happen the next cycle? It's going to flip back to the first one because you're going to get the, the one above and the one below. Okay. So it's, it's goofy, right? Some patterns you'll create and they just disappear over time, right? Here's one. It's kind of like an incomplete ring. And you can see what happens is the ends start vanishing, right? Because they only have one neighbor. And no new ones get created because there's no little, you know, area where there's three live cells surrounding it. 
So it just kind of slowly clips away. In turn one, right, there it's gone, right? And then in turn two, you know, oh, it's only got three. In turn three, it's only got one. What's going to happen in turn four? It's all gone, all disappeared. When, when, when uh, Conway came up with this in, in 1970 and wrote to, to uh, Martin Gardner about this, he, he said, and here's some really strange patterns. This is one that replicates itself, but it's like shifted over and down. And he called it a glider. You see, if you got the little five, you know, sharp signs there. And turn one, it shifts down a little, but it's a little goofy. And then turn two, it almost looks like a glider. And then turn three, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's warming up. And turn four, sure enough, there's the original turn zero arrangement, but it's over one and down one. So what's the game of the game of life? It's a game of exploration, looking for cool patterns, stable patterns, oscillations, gliders and spaceships. Spaceships are kind of like gliders, except they're bigger and they move straight across. Guns and space fillers. Well, what are guns? Guns are not like what you have in most videos. Guns are patterns that cycle, right? Right? They, they're periodic. They just, they just you, know, re, you know, regenerate, go back to the original thing. But then they emit, they emit gliders or spaceships. So here's, here's a cool one here. This is something called Gosper's Glider Gun from Bill Gosper. And this was like a month after the article appeared in Scientific American. So yeah, you think there are people who don't have enough to do with their time. Oh, this is actually kind of cool. And space fillers. Here's one. It kind of looks like a bug. It's got the little antenna on the top, and it's got the little claws out there. And what happens is, in 16 turns, it's a bigger, a bigger bug. 16 steps later, it's an even bigger bug, right? So it's got this, this, a square, this diamond that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger over time. And the di and the diamond is kind of like. It's not all filled in, but it's just a series of lines that are going to be relatively stable. So what's Conway's contribution? It was just to come up with the set of rules, right? And they said, they're so simple. And it's a completely deterministic game. You just follow the rule. You know, you talk about multiplayer games or single player games. This is a zero player game, right? It's just the rules out there. But it isn't easy to analyze what's going to happen with any particular pattern. And it's a fun way to waste time. Back in the 70s, we didn't have the internet to waste time. So we couldn't waste time shopping or checking stock prices. So what did we do at the office? We programmed our, our fancy graphics terminal to play the game of life. And then we had a switch so we could turn it over to something work-related if the boss came by. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so guess what? Here's Conway, right? And, and he's got this fancy graphics terminal, and it's like, oh yeah, oh. <laughs> did he do this? Sure. Another reason that that um, game of life is interesting is that young programmers learn to write a game of life simulator. I said I did it in '74 as a first semester um, uh, computer science student, right? It's a relatively easy program, but it uses two-dimensional arrays. So you learn something, right? Uh, if you're interested, right? There's a, there's a little uh, article called, um, or um, a video on YouTube called Coding the Game of Life in JavaScript. And it's by this guy, uh, uh, Schiffman, who does this coding train YouTube channel. And uh, th these links are all on my, uh, they're all going to be on the, um, Princeton ACM website under the downloads. Uh, of course, there are, you know, you can write your own simulator, or, you know, you can use some of the open source ones that are out there. And there's lots of places to find out more interesting things. There's a wiki that has lots of different stuff about kind of the current state of game of life research, and it's called Life Wiki. And in fact, these two guys, Nathaniel Johnston and, and uh, Dave Green, who uh, are kind of shepherds of the uh, wiki site, they actually put together a book, Conway's Game of Life, and it's really hard. <laughs> but, it's, but it's free, so it's okay. Uh, 
And Alan Zucconi is as a documentary that he put together back in 2020. And it's on some of these wild researchy things. Will Cavendish is actually working on a documentary. So that I put the website here. It's still in progress. You know, he's got a he's got a little trailer. What's going on today in kind of this researchy sort of area? Well, the idea is the Game of Life research folks have figured out a way to build a computer within the Game of Life environment. Basically, what you see here on this pattern here, it's a Turing machine. What's going on today in kind of this researchy sort of area? Well, the idea is the Game of Life research folks have figured out a way to build a computer within the Game of Life environment. Basically, what you see here on this pattern here, it's a Turing machine. <laughs> oh my God! And you can and and you can and you can have another part of it, which is the input tape. You know the the the, the program that actually gets fed into the yeah. Okay, so this is they what they do is they have glider guns that are basically used to send data from one part of the applica application to the other, right? They actually move the tape back and forth and stuff like that. Okay. And other Game of Life elements implement gates and latches and all of the kind of, you know, electrical engineering stuff. But this is, nope, this is all simulated in Game of Life pieces. So it's wild. Okay. So more about Conway. Uh, he was involved in a lot of really serious mathematical research, uh, did a lot of important things in group theory, including some of the stuff about the, the famous monster group, right? Uh, not some of you may have remembered, he, he gave a talk where he talk, showed us some not stuff uh, when we had a dinner meeting back 20 years ago. And combinatorial game theory, which he worked a lot on with, uh, with Richard Guy and uh, Elwin Burlikamp. Uh, some interesting mathematical recreation stuff, including Penrose tiles, Surreal numbers, which I read the uh, Donald Knuth book about this. It's pretty weird. And the Doomsday Algorithm, which he spoke to us about here, what probably about uh, about eight years ago. Uh, doomsday Algorithm is how to figure out what day of the week, any particular day in history. Was. Okay. Uh, Conway said, you know, for years he would tell people he hated the game of life. But he really hated it because... People weren't paying attention to his other stuff. They say, oh, you're the game of life guy. You know, I think of him as the surreal numbers guy, but you know, it's like, oh, that's okay. Uh, so there's a little interview here on YouTube where he talks about, you know, how he's kind of come to terms with being the game of life. And I have, a, I've included a few photographs of Conway in his office with his, his uh, 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 combinatorial uh, group there. Uh, kind of books, I guess, and uh, having fun with knots. So that's it, right? Martin Gardner wrote about the game of life in one of his columns, October 1970. He did a couple more columns, and they're actually included in this little book called Wheels, Life, and Other Mathematical Amusements. So, you know, it's another, you want to dip into some of the basics of this, but it's, but the, but the things that are in here are also in a PDF and, and again, the link of this will be on our website. And there was a biography of Conway that was done back in 2015. And this woman, you know, did a, got a great review in the New York Times. And they said, you know, because he's just, he was kind of a showman, you know, not just a mathematician, but he, he, he was interested in saying, you know, hey, this is what's interesting to you. So that's it. Conway, game of life. <laughs>